Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about e-bike security, because if you have a big fat tire e-bike like this one, you definitely don't want to get it stolen. And as well, I'm going to share some security tips as well as perhaps some of the biggest security flaws. Now I have to admit, I've had a lot of people ask me, what is the best e-bike lock out there? And because I am not a lock expert. Okay, so here's a video from the lock picking lawyer. If you haven't watched his videos on YouTube, he's got a bunch of them. He can pick any lock really fast. So here's one that he uses. Let's see what he says. This is the lock picking lawyer and rarely does a day go by when I'm not asked what bike lock I use. I should start by noting that I have two bikes. One is a nice road bike that I never leave anywhere unattended. Ah, uh, so he has one nice road bike and did you hear that? He never leaves it unattended. But I have another bike, a real cheap one that I bought for the sole <laughs> purpose one. of riding when I anticipate locking and leaving it. So that's defense number one, riding a bike that's not going to unduly attract or tempt thieves. So there you go, defense number one, make sure that people don't want to steal it. Either it's cheaper than whatever else is out there, you put duct tape on it to make it look like it's going to fall apart if they ride it. Uh, Let's lock this up and see what it takes to pick it open. So now that we've done this, I'm going to 250 this, is this where he started. And I made. Let's see how long it takes him. And four. Okay, got a nice click out of four. Five binding, got a click out of five. Six is binding. There we go. Got a click out of six. Seven feels like another zero cut. Let's actually use that one for tension. Try to set disc number one now. Just so you know, I have no idea what he's actually doing. I don't know how to do so, it. It doesn't take that long from... Okay, so we're at three minutes and 50 seconds. So with the right tool, even though he had a very nice heavy duty lock, it took him one minute, but he still uses it because you have to draw the line somewhere. Now here is a U-lock, which normally we talk about being picked, but what if you had the right Picking tool? lawyer, and today I'm continuing my series of videos testing bicycle locks against my 18-inch hydraulic cutters. Okay, those that blades is... are tight around the shackle, so let me zoom in just a bit to that give is you a, a better view. Thick lock, and get I mean. To cutting. It's like cutting into it like butter, frozen butter, but butter. I don't know what I would do with a pair of those hydraulic cutters, but I kind of want some now. Okay, I think that might have just broken. That, yeah. oh, that's crazy. And let's check to see if this would be enough to remove it from whatever it's locked to. All right, let's skip forward. Jaws, tighten them down. And let's zoom in a bit to give you a better view. I feel like this is gonna <laughs> explode in my face, but I'm not even there. Whoa! Okay, that was a shattered blade. I guess I put a little bit too much pressure on that. Wow. <laughs> on those blades. And one of the pieces shot up and broke one of my fluorescent lights. You can see I cut away the rubber coating here and the hydraulic cutter barely scratched the surface of the shackle. Wow. I think this lock has lived up to its excellent reputation. With a big enough, heavy duty enough lock, you'd have to have some major tools. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, now before we go any further, I know from my statistics on YouTube that at least 80% of you watching are not subscribed to my channel. If you're interested in electric bikes in any way, smash that subscribe button right now. Now that you've done that, YouTube likes it, and I like it if you hit that like button. So make sure to also hit that like button. It's great for the YouTube algorithm. I love it, YouTube loves it, and you'll love it too. Now for me, this may sound a little bit ridiculous, but when I take my bike to, say, the grocery store, and I really, really, really wanted to do a video of this, I had planned on doing this, but 
with the way things are right now, I decided that was a bad idea and we're gonna have to hold off till later or just skip that for now. But I wanted to show you how I take my bike, not to the grocery store, but into the grocery store. That's right, I actually take my bike into the store. What I will do is grab the stem right here. If I have saddlebags on the bike, then great. Or if not, I just have a backpack on, but I will actually just grab the stem and I will walk right alongside my bike through the store and just take it in with me. Or if there's room, depending on the store, maybe I'll park it inside the door where it's within my line of sight. I can see the bike at all times while I'm doing my shopping, get in and get out. Never had my bike stolen. And to me, that's the number one way to not get your bike stolen is actually don't lock it up. Keep it in your line of sight or in your hand at all times. Now, if you can't do that, you do need a lock. Now, this isn't gonna be a video in detail about this specific lock, but I do just wanna mention that I am going to be carrying this particular lock. It looked like it would be a good compromise between security, ease of use, and also portability. Based on what I've seen from the lock picking lawyer, uh, if you can open a lock with a key, somebody who has the right skills can pick it. So you can't have a lock that's 100% theft proof, uh, but I felt good about this one, so this will be on the Bolton eBikes website in the next month or so. I'll put a link in the video description, that way if you're looking for one, you know where to find it. Now, in addition to the overall bike itself, there are certain components that are more susceptible to theft than others. Obviously, a seat post with a quick release is easy to steal. You can literally undo the quick release and pull the seat out. So if you have an expensive seat or maybe a suspension seat post, you may want to just pop that out and take it with you. The same goes for the battery. Now here is a bike that's in the shop that's getting repaired. Now you can see the gap on the top of the frame. Now I only mention this because when the customer brought the bike in, he didn't bring the keys in with him. We said, that's fine, no problem. Now there's a spring-loaded latch inside right there. You could take a pocket knife, a screwdriver, and literally push the pin in and pop the battery out. That's not very secure. Yeah, you need a key, but realistically, without a key, if you have a tool of any kind, you can pop that battery off in literally seconds. So this is a rad power bike, and basically that's pushing a pin in and out. So because the pin only moves out in and out from the key and it's not spring loaded, you can't pry something in there. But this has a, a major flaw. I have the keys. Now this is my own Rad Rover bike that I bought for testing purposes. Uh, I just pulled the keys out of the bike that came with the bike. This is a blank. So here's what happened. Somebody lost the keys to their bike. They went to a locksmith to try and find a suitable key. And what you do is you find a blank first and you see if it even goes into the lock. And if it does, then you can have a key cut to fit the battery. It takes a bit of work, but that's how locksmiths can, can make a replacement key for you. Like I said, this is a blank. You can see there's no cuts in that key at all. Stick it in the lock and it turns. It works. Now, it's not just this battery that has this problem. Every single Rad Power bike with this style of battery works with this blank key, which you can literally buy by the hundreds, okay? So, if you have a Rad Power bike and you lost your keys, uh, I'll have blanks on my website. They'll replace your keys, so they would just work. Um, if you have multiple Rad Power bikes and you're tired of carrying multiple keys around, you can buy the blanks, and then it works on all of your bikes. On the downside, anybody who has a blank can literally go around and just unlock your bike. When I first heard about this, well, one, I had to try it myself <laughs> because I have customers who come in 
who have lost their keys and ask, can I get the batteries off? Or I have customers who come in uh, like the one over here and they just didn't bring the keys, didn't think of it, and I need to get the batteries off without the keys. Happens all the time in the shop. So the more tools I can have at my disposal, the better. So I took the blank and I fit it into every single bike. I tried like 20 different e-bikes that day. And I think I found a few bikes where the blank would go in, but it wouldn't unlock it. So next I took every other combination of keys that I could find, every other battery style that I could find that I had in the shop at the, at the time. And I tried different keys on different bikes and every single bike, the battery would only unlock with the keys that it came with. That's a major flaw. Um, you can use one key and it unlocks literally all of them. I've tried it on every other Rad Rover bike that I've had in and out of the shop with the other, this style of battery, and it always works. A couple of tips for your battery. One, if you wanna be safe, just take it inside with you. Uh, two, if you have one that has a gap like this, uh, you could try and put something in that gap to close it up a little bit. Now, let me give you an example. So this is one of the battery locks where it has that spring-loaded latch that I talked about. So here's the, the latch that holds the battery in place. And you can see how it's spring-loaded. I can push it without the key being in the lock. So that means if I was able to get a tool in there, I could squeeze it in there, kind of work this down, and uh, eventually push that down. But watch what happens when I put this battery on the bike, okay? Okay, see how small the gap is right there? it's so tight up against the frame, it's a really good fit, that you, you can't get a tool in there. So because you can't get a tool in there and work it in and out, you wouldn't be able to unlock this battery with that particular method. Now I know I just kind of threw this bike in here and didn't tell you anything about it. And to be honest, I'm not going to yet because this bike doesn't exist and it's not out yet. Part of the reason I wanted to have this bike in the video is because it looks really big and beefy and scary. And if you're riding something like that, maybe someone won't steal your bike because they're afraid of the person who's riding it. Someone tried to steal Arnold Schwarzenegger's electric bike. Obviously it didn't work, but probably not for the reason you're thinking. No, Arnold didn't stop him. It was his bodyguard who threatened the thief with a taser. So there's another option, have a bodyguard with a taser. Now on that note, if anyone knows Arnold Schwarzenegger and thinks that he needs a bigger, beefier bike, uh, I will hook him up with one of these right here. Just let me know. Maybe that'll be available in the near future. Stay tuned for more info on that later. So in the end, how can you really prevent theft? One, don't leave your bike unattended. Two, if you have to leave it unattended, use multiple locks. So you can have a lock like this, and then have a different style chain or a cable lock. If you have multiple locks where it takes multiple types of tools to steal your bike, it's gonna be far less likely that your bike's gonna be stolen for two reasons. One, the thief may not be carrying both of the tools that are required to cut your lock open or pick your lock. And the second reason is it's gonna take them more time. Thieves wanna go for easy targets. If your bike is locked up with two locks that are really good, and there's a bike next to it that only has one lock that's not very good, which one are they gonna steal? Number three, secure certain parts that would make your bike a target, like the battery. If you remove the battery, you're gonna absolutely prevent the battery from being stolen, but you're also going to make your e-bike a less attractive target because who wants an e-bike without a battery? You can't ride it as well and it's not as valuable. And lastly, I just think you should be aware of any security flaws on your bike that make certain components an easy target. So if you have a seat that has a quick release that can be popped off and you don't want it stolen, change the quick release to one that bolts on. You could do the same thing for the wheels. There are locks or locking skewers you can get that make it harder for people to steal the wheels off of your bike. There are many things already on the market for traditional bicycles that can be applied to electric bikes. Before your bike gets stolen, here's a few things you can do to cover your losses. One, write down the serial number on your bike. The serial number is most likely going to be on the head tube. 
If it's not up here on the head tube, then it's probably going to be down low on the bottom bracket or somewhere on the frame. Now, the other thing you could look into is your homeowner's insurance. Some of them will actually cover the theft of an electric bike. And then there are some insurance companies out there specifically for electric bike or bicycle theft. So you can actually find companies where you pay, you know, a hundred some dollars a year. And if your bike ever gets stolen, they'll buy you a replacement. In the meantime, don't let any of this keep you from riding your bike, having a ton of fun with it and using it on a daily basis. I will be back again soon. I know I've been teasing new exciting things. There's a little sneak peek. Uh, there will be more to come on that. That's not the only bike like that. I'm really excited, but we've just got a few more things to work out before I can show you the rest. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. I will be back with another e-bike related video next week.